to take a look at seven small towns across Arizona for you to experience and explore. Pretty nice towns. Let's get started. All right, starting out here down in Southern Arizona, just off the Mexican border, we have Bisbee, an old mining town where they used to get tons of copper. And when I say tons, I mean literally tons of copper came out of here. Copper may have been what put it on the map, but gold and silver was also out here in 1880s. The town is named after the Honorable Judge DeWitt Bisbee, and he was one of the financial backers for the Copper Queen Mine, which people still like to visit and check out today. Nowadays, people like to walk up and down the main drag here. It's interesting because Bisbee sits in like a canyon ravine at a mile high, so it's over 5,000 feet elevation, and it does like to boast that it has some of the best weather year round than anywhere else in the world. Now, being that there is seven towns that we're recommending in this particular video compilation, I would say Bisbee is in the top three places. It's one of those kind of charming, uh, historical towns that really catches your attention when you come through here. Uh, if you get a chance, maybe stay the night. Really like it. Uh, the food is, you know, they've got some good restaurants. It's a lot better when uh, COVID's not around, but this was one of the boom towns of the Southwest, not just of Arizona. This one was really a boom town, thanks to Phelps Dodge back in the day around about just prior to the Great Depression. I personally love Bisbee. Maybe you will too. And next up, we'll head over to the Copper Queen Mine, show you guys this big old hole in the ground. And then uh, that's on the way to Mexico, South Bisbee. Next up on the list, we're headed over to Sedona. North central Arizona is where Sedona is located. The Red Rocks are at the foothills of the old Mogollon Rim and just south of everyone's favorite water playground, Oak Creek Canyon, where Slide Rock is. And then on to Uptown, or Downtown as some like to call it, in Sedona. This is where everyone likes to get their breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or take a pink Jeep somewhere into the hills and do some of the trails and exploring around the Red Rocks. And if you do enjoy this video, please do crush up the likes. If this is your first time here, you can consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the bell to get notified when we release new videos. But you can see here, really a nice area to do some shopping and hang out. Weather in Sedona is typically 10 to 15 degrees cooler than Phoenix, but sometimes it's not too far off depending on the heat wave in Arizona. And there's a look at the pink Jeep that you take up into the Jeep trails and plenty of wilderness and hiking trails to do on foot, as you can see. Many would argue that Sedona is their favorite place to go in Arizona. It does attract a lot of the uh, spiritual types. There are individuals in Sedona who consider themselves shamans or spiritually enlightened. If you're into that kind of stuff, they call that the new age spiritualism. But for the most part, people go there for the scenery, the views, the hiking, the outdoors experience, just the beauty and the grandeur of the Red Rocks. And the art and shopping, who could forget the art and the shopping? Anyways, just down the road towards the Black Hills, about an hour away from Sedona, we're heading towards Jerome, an old ghost town 
also founded upon copper. In case you didn't know, Arizona is called the Copper State. But the demand for copper kind of went down. So after the Great Depression, Jerome was another one of the cities to become a ghost town. And in case you don't know why they call it a ghost town, I'll explain. It's not necessarily because there's ghosts. It's because when a town is deserted or abandoned, the city usually only contains substantial visible remaining structures. And they say, well, ghosts are the only thing that's left. Ghosts of the past. Now, with that being said, Jerome is one of the biggest ghost towns in America and also considered haunted. So that's one of the things that people do is they go to these haunted hotels or to the haunted hamburger, but also rest assured there's more to do than just go get scared and do some haunted stuff. People like to wine taste walk around the streets. Jerome is one of those places that if you don't choose to stay the night, that's just fine. You'll stay a couple hours, maybe walking up and down the streets, grab a bite to eat, and then you're good to go. And you go back down the Black Hills towards Cottonwood. It's one of those kind of deals. You don't need to spend all day in Jerome. It's really small. It's just like most other ghost towns. But it is also everyone's favorite ghost town to visit in Arizona. And primarily because of the windy road that goes up the hill, the historical past, the mining history. There's quite a few museums, which obviously if you do choose to check out those museums, you might plan for a full day in Jerome. Oh. And don't forget the J on the top of the hill. One more thing. Halloween in Jerome might just be a thing you want to partake in. And now going down the hill to Cottonwood, everyone's favorite city in the Verde Valley. It's not a city, it's a town, but it is the main place to go when you're in the Verde Valley, sitting just along the Verde River. Here in the downtown area on Main Street, Lots of shopping again, the old historic area. What people usually like about Cottonwood is mm, the Verde River. The laid back feeling, that's really what it is. And that's what leads people to say, hey, you know what? I want to live in Cottonwood. And that's what's been happening because there's been a boom been going on for some time now. It's a slow but gradual boom. People who go to Cottonwood, they usually uh, start thinking, hey, can I buy one of these houses that overlooks the Verde River? You know, also some RV parks are popping up. So it is definitely uh, on people's radar as a place to go. It's no longer a sleepy little town, actually. Some people are saying it's starting to get too big for their liking. Also, everyone, if you're still watching this video, I'm going to ask you to crush up those likes. Also, let us know which one of these towns is your favorite that we've shown so far. And at the end of the video, please do let us know which one of these small towns you consider to be number one. If you do choose to visit Cottonwood, you know, you'll do some wine tasting, stop at a cafe. You could also see Jerome, which is literally 15 to 20 minutes away. Another thing that people like to do is go to the neighboring town of Clarkdale and hop on the Verde Railroad. That's pretty cool too. Some people like to get in the flume down here along the river. I don't think that's uh, allowed, but hey, some people do it anyway. But just getting in that Verde River will cool you down a little bit. Now we're heading back down to Southern Arizona to check out Old Tombstone, the stomping grounds of Doc Holliday, Wyatt Earp, the Earp Brothers, 
because there was more than just Doc and Wyatt, right? But Tombstone, they call it a ghost town, but it was a former boom town. Lots of uh, interesting history down here if you're into hearing about it, but it was a silver uh, mine that really put Tombstone on the map. Nowadays, people go down there to see the reenactment of the shootout at the OK Corral. There's also a Gunfighters Hall of Fame down here in Tombstone, making it one of the favorite places to check out Wild West history. There's a few other places down here that you'll want to check out, like the Birdcage Theater, which is bullet ridden from all the outlaws. There's a few other places around this area that keep you entertained and keep you on track. This Boot Hill Cemetery is where there's a few outlaws and sheriffs and other locals from back in the day that have uh, taken up residence in this cemetery. Back in the old days, it wasn't too uncommon for people to handle disputes over a gun shootout, but it was lawless. That's why they call it the Wild West. And even an amusement park down there for the kids. But overall, you're noticing a theme here. These small towns used to be the big boom towns that built Arizona. Between Jerome, Tombstone, and Bisbee, this was the big ticket out here in the Wild West. For me, I like the weather out in Tombstone. It's just like Bisbee, but lower elevation. They get monsoon still, so. I think it's a pretty good place to visit in the summertime, maybe a little bit hot at the peak afternoon hours, but you come down here, you explore and learn the history. It's kind of like a rite of passage. Once you've moved to Arizona or lived in Arizona, you've got to go to Tombstone. There's also a movie made about Tombstone back in the day, I think in the early 90s. So if you want to watch that Hollywood uh, film, brush up on some information about Tombstone before you go, the OK Corral shootout. On Netflix, Hulu, search Tombstone. It makes you wonder why a silver mining town got the name Tombstone. Well, the nickname is a town too tough to die, but the name comes because it was extremely dangerous. The Apache Indians considered it to be their land and they were all ready to fight for it. And that was the soldier's warning. And now we're headed on down the road up towards Gila County to Globe, Miami. Both of these places were a classic Western copper boom town. So the Miami area, which is just down the road from Globe, five minutes down the road, 10 minutes down the road, has a historical downtown area as well as Globe, I find these to be a really interesting area. It just depends on your taste. The population is around about seven to 10,000 people between the two towns. Globe Miami is considered the gateway to Roosevelt Lake and the San Carlos and Apache land. There is no shortage of outdoor activities. In fact, people like to come up here and do some treasure hunting. That's how much history there is up here. Uh, if you do bring the metal detector and do some uh, treasure hunting, be sure to make sure it's allowed on that area that you're prospecting. But the uh, quaint old time charm of the historic courthouse and the county jail, the churches, just go down there and do a walking tour. You can hire a guide to give you some history as you can do in any of these towns really. Now, with that being said, before I reveal number seven to you, I got to thinking there's so many great small towns around here that could be on this list. And I feel like I'm selling some of them short, but if you guys want a part two to this, I could make a part two and a part three that would be seven 
uh, towns each as well. I mean, we're talking places like Bullhead City, which is interesting, Lake Havasu City. I could even include Greer, uh, Holbrook, Winslow, Williams, Page. So many different towns that could have been on this list. But before we reveal number seven, I just wanted to put that out there. Thanks to everyone who crushed up the likes on this video, by the way. Here we go into Payson, sitting at the foothills of the Mogollon Rim in Eastern Arizona, just up the road from Globe, Miami. This town here is home to the world's oldest continuous rodeo. Prescott being home to the oldest rodeo, but not a continuous rodeo like good old Payson here. Payson is about 90 minutes outside of Phoenix up the uh, Beeline Highway, so it's pretty easy to get to from Phoenix. It actually used to be called Green Valley. You'll know you're in Payson when you start seeing pine trees after you're coming out of the desert. So that's uh, how you know you're in Payson. Payson is considered a good place to have a second home for the summer or even a retirement community, believe it or not. But there's neighboring towns around here that you'll want to check out, such as Christopher Creek. If you go up on the Mogollon Rim, you can go to Forest Lakes. Or if you go east towards Flagstaff, you'll see Pine and Strawberry, which could have easily been on this list themselves. Do a little antique shopping around here. Head up to the Mogollon Rim, do some hiking. Some great creeks to explore around here for hiking, actually. Some of the best in Arizona around Payson. And anyway, thanks for watching this video and subscribing to this channel, to all of those of you who are keeping up with us. And if you haven't watched these other videos, I have a video on this channel for each one of these places specifically you can search out or just watch one of these videos here at the end but got plenty of videos from around Arizona for you guys to check out if you're looking to learn more about the state they call it the great 48 and we'll see you on the next one